Hi Stampers, this is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. Welcome. Yay! Always fun to catch it live, right? Um, I wanted to remind everybody about the prize patrol. I tend to forget that sometimes. So while you're watching, make sure to tap in hashtag prize patrol for your chance to win today's card. So um, again, my name is Lisa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I go live every Monday and Thursday at 2.30 Mountain Time on YouTube and on Facebook. And we usually make some sort of card or project. And today we're playing around with the tree lot dies. I don't know if you've heard, but they are part of Celebration. They're in our little brochure, and they were free with a $100 order. They have sold out. We do not have any more. So I'm hoping you guys already placed your order and got your little dies because they are adorable. And we're going to be making a cute little card with them today. Hopefully you caught me on Monday when we made the little campers. I made little gift box campers um, that would hold, you know, a few treats or something. But then I also flipped the bottom, um, the part that held them together and made little lamps that went onto a string of lights. And so it was a string of lighted trailers. It was really cute. So pop over to YouTube and make sure you check that out because it was really fun. But today we're going to be making a card and I've made several faux sidestep cards in the past and this could be done as a faux card as well. I just wanted to show you guys the other way to do it. Um, and I've done this quite a bit and there's a template on my blog, but it just kind of it's cut down the middle and then cut in steps. And so we're going to work our way through that. I have not cut my base because I wanted to show you guys how I did it. So um, I did not buy the coordinating stamps that went with the tree lot dies because I already had the mountain dies. And so this mountain air bundle this is from our annual catalog and it's on page 95. Let's do the old switcheroo here. And so here's those mountain air dies. And when you're looking at them in the catalog, I wanna point out that they are reversible. And somebody goes, okay, well, what's that mean? Well, it means that on one side of the photopolymer, it's detailed and it's gonna give you all of the little ridges and things for the mountains. But these stamps are also designed in that you can flip them over and use the other side to just stamp like a shadow of something. I don't know if you can see it back in here, but some of the trees have the little detail in them and some of them are solid. And so it's the solid ones where they're using the back of these stamps. Does that make sense? So they're reversible. And it says it right here in the corner. That's what that little thing means. And the jar of flowers does the same thing. And then this year they came out with a coordinating set that I'm really excited about because we live in Twin Falls. And in Twin Falls, we have the Perrine Bridge and it runs over the Snake River. And it's one of the few places people can base jump. I, I had never heard of it before we got here. But apparently there's very few places where people can jump off of the bridge and have one of those parachutes come out of their backpack and they land in the Snake River. And so our bridge looks a lot like this here. And then Shoshone Falls, of course, has the falls. And I want you to just, as a little hint, take a peek at this. See how that's die cut? There's not die cuts yet, but there might be. Keep your eyes peeled. So um, that's what we're working on today is we're making a mountain scene and it's going to be with a little camper. Now this paper back here is the, what is it? It's not the wonderful world. The wonderful world and this one, just drop the name of it, Rings of Love. The Rings of Love designer series paper and 
the other one, which we're going to be playing with next week, which is this wonderful world. These two designer series papers have been sold out, but they're getting more. They're supposedly on their way in. They may have even already arrived. So if you find that they're unavailable and you cannot order them, don't panic yet because those ones are probably, I mean, we're told they're definitely coming back. But here's our card. So obviously, we want to get started with a base, right? Let's go ahead and get started on that. I'm going to reach over into my drawer. I know I've showed you guys often, but there's always new people on. Is I have a file cabinet, and in each of my drawers is the, the colors. There's two that have all our main colors, and a third drawer that has our in colors and vellum and thick white, thick, very vanilla. But in each one is this little pocket, which holds all my little scraps. And so every scrap in here is early espresso. These are my loose sheets. And then I have my full pack. So every color in the drawer has its own folder. And in that way, it's really easy to flip through there not only find my full sheets, but find the scraps because a lot of the other little things like, you know, our little trees and the dog and the mountains, those are all done with scraps. And rather than have to dig through a pile of them or into a box, I already had them done. They're in the little um, pocket inside the folder. So I'm going to pull in this eight and a half by 11 and we're going to make a card base, which is almost always score and half, cut in half. So this time I want to cut this direction. So I'm cutting on the eight and a half on the 11 inch side at five and a half. Then I'm going to spin it and cut at or score. Sorry. Score at four and a quarter. <clears throat> Okay, then I'm gonna pull out my other thing because we're gonna do some more scoring. Oops, drop my pieces. And I like these to be accurate, so I pull out my Simply Scored. You can do this on your trimmer as well if you're confident in that. I just like that these are little ridges that I like can't go out of the lines in, <laughs> so it keeps me honest, so to say. Um, especially on camera, you know, I guys get a little flustered and things are not always as smooth when the camera is running. And so for that reason, I'm going to pull up my template and I'll even show you guys. Let's see. And it'll be on my blog because I've made this card before. I've done it with the, um, dresser. I've done it with the toolbox. There's been a couple different ones that I've done. PDF tutorials, and then, come on. There we go, there's one of them. Okay, so. Oh, I will do that, sorry about that. I forgot the label was still up there. I usually try to pull that out of the way. Okay. All right. Back to our card and the template. So here's the template. And so this is showing you that it's it's showing it this way. So it's five and a half by eight and a half. But I'm going to spin it and I'm going to go ahead and score. And so I want to score halfway. So let's see. Let's do this part first. Let's make this clearer so you guys can see. Okay, we're going to have our step be halfway across. So I'm going to go at two and three quarter. And then I'm going to watch my ruler over here. And if you've watched me before, you know that I have this row of tear and tape behind the numbers so that I can read them because it's dark numbers on dark cardstock. 
they would be near invisible to my old eyes. So what I want to do is I want to watch that little measurement and I'm going to cut from one up to six and three eighths. Okay, so I'm just using this little line on my trimmer and I'm lining it up with the numbers on my ruler. Okay, so now that I've done that, I know how far to score. So I'm going to score at one inch. It's going to be down this way. That's going to be my bottom step. And then I'm going to score at two inches. And then I'm going to score at three and one eighth. And then we've already got the four and a quarter. And then I'm going to go six and three eighths. And so that's going for, the cut is going from one line to the other line. Does that make sense? So we're halfway across this direction. And then our steps are just cut over to that. And I want my steps to be on this side. Obviously it works both ways. If you wanted to go this direction, you could have the steps on your left, but I'm going to go ahead and put them on the right. So I'm going to go ahead with the bone folder. We're going to make our normal crease, but then I'm going to bring this one down. We're going to score that one, that one, and this one. So now I've burnish the top part, but there's two more in here that I want to go back and do. Okay. So that's how it's going to end up. Everybody following me so far? <laughs> A craft room tour, huh? <laughs> I can probably do that need to do a little bit of cleaning because I don't know, you guys probably don't know, but if you've been to my classes live, you know, a lot of times when I'm filming the little clutter piles that are on this side, go over to the class table. And when I'm doing classes, the little clutter piles come to this side, you know, all my little work in progress stuff. Okay. So we're going to remove this one. There we go. So we have our base. Now from that base, we're going to be putting on this piece right here, and then we're going to also have it come across here. There's two ways I can do that. I can do that in two different pieces, or we can do it in one. It's a little easier to do it in two pieces, and it looks like it practically lines up. So I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it as two, since the trailer is going to run over it we're not really going to see. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Oh, there we go. That's it right there. Okay. Now I wouldn't need to line it up necessarily. It's not going to be a big deal, but Let's go ahead and make it match. So I put a little mark at where the bottom is. So I'm going to come in and cut on that mark. And then I know that it's one inch at the bottom. So this needs to be three quarter because our borders are always, almost always a quarter of an inch. So then that will go here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Now, if we were doing it as one piece, I'll go ahead and tell you, it would have been cut to four inches by five and a quarter.
And then um, lots of you saying that you joined. How come you didn't join under me and be on my team? <laughs> Just asking. Um, you would do this at four inches by five and a quarter. And then we would come over two and a half inches because, or I guess it would be a little more, it'd be two and five eighths and then up three quarters of an inch. And so then you would just cut out this wedge. And then you would end up with this all as one piece, okay? Okay, so I've already got our little trailer started. Um, I did some of that on Monday's live. I showed how the the camper was one die, and then the little pieces that go over it. This was another die, and then this time I'm going to be using the so saffron for the windows. And so I just cut another camper, or at least the center out of the camper so that I could get the little windows. Um, and then the little pieces for the, what do you call it? The, gosh, I'm losing my words today. The little posts to hang our lights. And then I also have the lights cut out. So we're kind of putting a puzzle together. That's what these dies do, is they do a little puzzle. So a little dog, we've got our trees. Each tree has the base and then it has the little things over it. That give us a little more depth. I'm just punching out the little pieces in the middle. Sometimes they just fall out. Sometimes they need a little poking. And then here's the big one. Now I also talked on Monday about the little tire and I just cut a piece of the, the trailer die out just to include the trailer or the tire because I want the tire all by itself. And I did it on some cardstock that has peel and stick adhesive on the back. Our adhesive sheets are fabulous in that you can put it on the cardstock and then do your die cuts, and your die cuts become stickers. Um, that little chart that I had with the the toolbox and with there's one with the baby dresser, they are definitely on my blog. You would just go to the search bar. Uh, and put in baby dresser or toolbox and that template with the measurements will pop up. Okay, so I'm just getting myself organized here so that I don't confuse everybody for all my little pieces. So I've got my posts, my lights, the little dog, the three trees, and my camper, and then the wheel to the camper. There's a little score line right here that I'm going to cut on. There we go. So I'll just cut straight across that score line. And then, like I said, it's peel and stick. So this will go directly onto the other one. Does everybody have this take your pick tool? This is awesome. I use it all the time for lots of different things. I was actually using it today. I had a little tiny scrap of paper and it didn't have anything to hold on to in order to put it into a punch. It was like just the right size to fit. The paper was just the right size to fit into a punch. And so I was able to use the putty end of my take your pick tool to wiggle it around inside. Since I couldn't grab the outside, 
I could take this and move my paper back and forth until it was perfectly centered and then I could punch even though there was nothing on the sides for me to grab. And you can also extend your cardstock with a post-it note that works too. All right, where am I? Let's see. I always get a little sidetracked. I give you guys little tips and then forget where I am. <laughs> okay, so here's my little windows. I'm going to put some Wink of Stella on them. I just like that it makes them look a little more illuminated because the idea I'm going for is to look like there's life inside the trailer, that they're awake and playing cards or something. And then I need my window curtain, but I need to stamp my trees and my mountains back here. So we're going to go ahead and do those so I can run them through the cut and emboss machine at the same time. I always try to layer as many pieces on there. Like I took a little strip of early espresso, a little strip of so saffron the black, the mossy meadow, the old olive, and I kind of arranged them on my plate and ran them all through at the same time. So always remember that you don't have to load each die separate, even if they're different colors. You just kind of arrange them on the um, platform so that they all feed through at the same time. So I had said I wanted to do the curtain. So the curtain is that little piece here. I want that to be in the uh, balmy blue. Then we're going to stamp our mountains. So I'm going to do that on soft suede and the trees on old olive. I did them in garden green here and I just didn't, I mean, it's, they're definitely all greens, but I thought I'd do it in one of the two greens up here this time. It'll match a little better. That's one of my favorite things about Stampin' Up! is everything is so color coordinated that if I have um, a marker, a uh, ink pad, cardstock, embellishments, ribbon, and, you know, soft suede or balmy blue, they're all going to match. And then even our designer series paper lists the colors that are involved in that piece so that you know which pieces of cardstock to pull out when you're working with a certain designer series paper. Stamps, I need stamps. Okay, now these are longer. Often I use this H block, but this time I need to use an eye block, which is much bigger. It's the same shape and, you know, without doing the comparison, you don't realize how much bigger it is. But this um, stamp is so long it would not fit onto that one. I have this in there if I wanted to stamp my mountains and then stamp trees over it. Um, this is before we had masking paper. I would just hold this over it to cover up my trees so then I could, or cover up my mountains so I could stamp my trees and they appeared to be coming from behind. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp this twice and then we're going to die cut it out. I'm going to do soft suede ink on soft suede cardstock. And I'm using the detailed side. Remember, these stamps are reversible. So if I was to use the other side, I would just have a solid image. But I want the detail. Now, I'm just moving back and forth this way. But often when I have a large stamp, I'll turn it over and go this way. There's little ridges on the side of the pad. And sometimes it's easier to apply the ink that direction. 
do whatever is more comfortable for you, but I wanted to let you know it's an option. So there's the two mountains I want. I have some a balmy blue with the sticky on the back. I only need a little piece. And then we need our trees and the trees will use the same block. So I'm gonna bring in one of my little um, chamois. I took the big chamois and cut it into four pieces so that they're little and more, um, I wanna say transportable, but they, when you're using them on the stamp apparatus, it doesn't touch other things as you're trying to clean the stamp that's on the stamp apparatus plate. So I'm going to come back in and the trees are here. And also when you have something long like this, like if this was, this is pretty solid, so it's going to be fine. But when we had the penguin, we have the penguins and it has just that little slope, you know, and it's one thin thing. Did you know that you can set it down on your um, grid paper and then take and pick it up with your block and it'll be the way it's designed to? But if you had a, a phrase or a word and you wanted it to do a little bit of a bend, that you can do that. You would just bend it and then stick it down on your block and you would have the arch, you know, or wave that you're looking for. But I want them straight. So old olive ink, we're going to go on old olive cardstock. I know there's grid paper already under there, but I'm trying to keep it neat so I can use it again next Monday when we do another live. Okay, and since it's on the back, this isn't going to matter. So now I need to die cut these out. And I have my die cut machine over here to the side because it's so big. Um, I think we could use the little ones if we wanted to, but I wanted to use my magnetic platform. This was something that was available for a while and then a couple of people had issues with it coming apart. I have not had that issue, so I love mine, but apparently it was separating in here. I, I don't know why, but they stopped making them until they can get that corrected. So if you did order one, Stampin' Up! automatically refunded you for it. So you get to keep it, but they refunded your money because they are so insistent that they want to keep up their quality and have you guys be happy with what you purchased from them that they just went ahead and automatically did a refund. All right, plate. So there's one set of mountains, here's the other. See, I'm loading them all up and feeding them through at the same time. Mary, did you get to use yours a lot? I don't understand why they're coming apart. I've used mine a lot 
and it hasn't yet, knock on wood, but I'm really bummed because I love the magnetic aspect. I just wondered if there was something different. Did you use a thicker material or, I mean, I don't know, weird. But good news is it was free, right? Okay, now one of the things I'm going to need to do is shorten these up. Because I want them to fit on that little step, and the little step is only two and three quarter inch. So I'm going to whack off an edge. And then I'm going to whack off the other edge, I think. Let's see. I want, I want to be able to line them up and have them, you know, look like they're not exactly in line with one another. So that they look like two sets of mountains, you know what I mean? So that one is easy if I've got it matched up there. Then I'm going to set this down on my two and three quarter down here. Actually, let's go three inches because I can always trim it up. Oop. And then these are going to go on that back step. So I'm going to find my card base and we're going to put the first one See, flush with that edge, and I'm going to put it up kind of as high as I can go. This is why we recommend you store the glue upside down so that it's always ready to go. kind of sneak in here and snip off the part that hangs over. And I suppose if I'd cut it to exactly two and three quarter, it would have done that automatically, but I don't, know, I don't trust myself or something. But there's that part. And then this one, I'm going to go the other direction, I guess. I'll make this nice and straight and I'll butt that up on the other side. You know what? Let's actually put it on dimensionals. Let's do that. That way they'll have even more depth. Or any way you could use packing tape to tape the magnetic die together. Maybe. I would certainly try to save it. I love mine. I, don't know, I grew up in the Bay Area out in California. And we had this cartoon, not I want to say cartoon, but they were puppets that were on in between the afternoon kid shows. And what was it? It was a bulldog and a horse, maybe. Uh, they, they broke a lamp one time and it was glue. We need glue. And so every time something comes apart, that's what rushes through my head. Glue. We need glue. I actually even looked it up for my kids one time because they thought I was lost my mind. But it was on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube. Okay, so there's our mountains. And then here's our trees. And I have them a little bit high. So we'll be able to knock those down. 
again, I prefer to be a little bit too big because I can always cut down, but it gets more difficult when you go to add them on. So, you know, another thing you can do if you want it to match exactly, if you're not sure your measurements are just right, is you can see I've got it in there. I'm going to flush it up with one side and then do a pencil on the other. And see, it is exact, two and three quarter. Okay. And then I'm going to hear this on the bottom. Yeah, stronger glue and clamps. That sounds like a good idea. We're almost done. So I'm going to now, I have on my, I've mentioned often, I have on my blog the tools I recommend. And one of the things I recommend is this little thing. It's a ballpoint pen, but rather than ink, it's glue. So it works really well for these tiny little things if I didn't use my adhesive sheets and I needed glue. These work wonderfully. So then our string of lights will go between there, but it looks like it's only going to go to just a little bit past that one. So I can snip it off. And they're already yellow, which is what I wanted for my actual lights. So I just need to darken the string. So I'm going to bring in my stamp and blend marker. <laughs> There's a name for it, right? And I'm going to color this. And I'm kind of holding it in angle so I can get, you know, top and bottom. are a little shaky but once we get it glued down on there it'll look fine See, this is a fabulous instance where I should have used adhesive sheet because the little things to dab your glue on are so small. 
The other thing I've done is sometimes I'll put a little bit of glue on the silicone craft mat and then use a sponge dauber to pick it up and then dab it on the back of the die. That'll give a nice even thin layering of the Tombow glue. No, the glue pen is not, an, uh, it's on Amazon, so it's on my products I recommend list off my blog. Oops. Come on. I didn't hold it long enough. You'll be proud of me. I have the next two weeks worth of lives already done up. I know what I'm making. So I have my samples and I can do up my graphics and be able to start scheduling them and know what I'm doing two weeks out. So for the next several lives, I'm going to have my projects so I can show you what's coming up for the next live. They're already done. Come on. Okay, maybe I should have done the silicone craft mat with the Tombow glue. <laughs> my fingers are sticky. That's what it is. When I let go, the sticky on my finger seems to be stronger than the sticky I left on the back. Okay, so I'm going to set the trees, two of them over here and one over here. So... Place this one here. And I've got our little puppy dog, and so I'll mount him on some dimensionals too. And then we're just down to our trailer. Okay, so here's our windows. And our curtain. In order to make the windows stick in there, what I'm gonna do is put some tear and tape on the back. And I could actually even just glue it to the card and then glue them in. I suppose that could have been an option. Now my trailer, the window back there, I have sticky going across, which I didn't mean. Okay, let me just show you. There's tear and tape I pulled the thing off of, so this part's sticky. So what I need to do is use my embossing buddy, which is the little packet of powder.
which of course is not where I left it. Because hmm. this little tool set, we now have the embossing buddy back. It comes with the little tray, a little brush, and then these awesome reverse tweezers. But what I'll do is take my embossing buddy and put a little bit of powder on the back and then it'll no longer be sticky. So I apologize for that little goof. I didn't think about the fact it wasn't all on the card. Okay, so I'm peeling off this sticker part and then my curtain is gonna go right on top of my window. And we can even have the little flags on it if we wanted. There was a wreath that goes on the door. I'm going to highlight the little handle and the hubcap. But there we go. There's our little trailer in the mountains on a step card. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. Like I said, make sure you have typed in hashtag prize patrol. I'm going to do a drawing and whoever wins the drawing will win today's card. I will get that out in the mail to you. Hopefully you have the camper dies and can do this adorable card. Now remember, if you didn't get the camper dies, I'm sorry, they are sold out. But the camper and the dog, I mean, a lot of this you can do with the dies that come with the Mountain Air bundle. So you can still do a good portion of this card all with this. And I was looking through the catalog actually, and there's, you know, the little deer, and last year we had the moose. Um, there's lots of things that you could use to be jumping around in the woods instead of the camper. All right, so these um, actually are from Stamp and Storage. Um, they're a kind of a cardboard magnet piece. They sell these and then they sell the clear envelopes that they go into and then I just save the little piece of paper that has the name on it and then they have little tabs with my labels and they sit in one of those rolling carts so that the you know the labels are offset and I can easily find what I'm looking for I love these things so if you want some of these they are stamp and storage and there is a link on the sidebar of my blog that will take you there Okay, so next week, I have next week's cards done. We're going to be playing with that. It's a wonderful world. So these are the, the three cards I will feature next week. And we will be making this one. And we will be making this one on our lives next week. I don't know which one's Monday and which one's Thursday, but those will be the um, lives for next week. And then the following week, we'll be playing around with the pomegranate bundle. And so I'll be doing these two for my lives the following week. So, Thank you for joining me. I'm going to switch over and spin our wheel. So last chance to put in hashtag prize patrol. Close down my template. And then we will move this, add this. And we're ready to spin. Melinda's our winner. So congratulations, Melinda. You will be getting today's card mailed to you as your prize for watching with us live. 
Thank you for joining me, everybody. I will see you Monday at 2.30 right back here. Thanks. Bye.